Hi team, welcome to the session on Coffee with Prab and in today's podcast or you can say Cyber Chronicle series, we're going to discuss about rise of hackers from frakers to legends. Imagine a world where the group of teenagers armed with nothing but curiosity and bit of tech known how or could outsmart the billion dollar companies, right? So before cybersecurity become a buzzword, these early hackers laid the groundwork for everything we know about the internet, both its promise and its danger. Welcome to the episode two of Cyber Chronicle, where we explore the root of the modern hacking or modern hacking, starting with Frakers, the pioneers who hacked the phone lines and ending with the birth of the legendary hackers who redefined what was possible. And stay tuned because today we'll meet Mr. Kevin Metnick, the man who became the world most wanted hacker. Was he a hero or a criminal or both? We'll, we'll, we'll discuss in this case study. So in the 1970, the internet does not exist yet, but the phones were everywhere. A group of curious teens and tech enthusiasts discover something incredible. By playing a specific tones, they cannot control the telephone system. These tones played through the homemade device called as a blue boxes. Blue boxes could let them make free calls, reroute lines, even eavesdrops on the conversation. And this was the birth of fraking, a form of hacking that predates the digital age. One of these frakers was a young Steve Wozniak, Mr. Steve Wozniak, okay, who, who could later go on a co-found Apple. But here the twist is fraking was not just a hobby. It laid the foundation for what would come next, hacking into the computers. So fast forward to the 1990s, computers are becoming more common and network like ARPANET was starting to connect universities, research centers. And for the first time, the hacker have a new playground, which is called as a digital world. The era also saw the rise of bulletin board system, BBS, the online forum where the hackers shared tips, tools, even code. And it is there the hacking community was born. One of the earlier group to emerge was the 414S, the name after the area code in, in uh, this called uh, Milwaukee's. So in 1983, these teenage hackers broke into system at Los Alamos National Laboratory, which was working on the nuclear research. The FBI eventually caught them, but the story made headline and showing the world that, ev- that even kids could now outsmart advanced system. And the question is, and the question was no longer can computer be hacked. It was how far hacker can go. And this is the rise of Kevin Metnick. So the Kevin Metnick, the hacker who would become a legend and the Metnick did not break into system. He turned hacking into the art form. So in the late 1980s, and early 90s, the Mitnick hacked the, some of the biggest corporations in the world, including IBM, Nokia, Motorola. And here's what made him unique. He did not do it for the money or fame. He did not do it for thrill or, or, of, or you know, he did not do it for the thrill of outsmarting the system. Metnick's specialty was social engineering. He tricking the person into giving him access to secure system. Imagine, you know, calling an employee and pretending to be IT support and convincing them to hand over their password. And th- that was the Metnik weapon of choice. By 1995, Metnik was run or uh, was on run, evading the FBI while, you know, while continuing to hack. And he became a digital ghost using a stolen identities and burner phones to stay one step ahead. And and then after a year of persuade, he finally caught an FBI called him the world most wanted hacker and he spent five years in prison. But was Metnik a criminal mastermind or was he simply ahead of time? So let's let's learn from the early hackers. So what we can learn from the early hacker was curiosity can be dangerous. From freaking into hacking, these pioneers were not malicious, they were curious. But the curiosity exposed the vulnerabilities that no one can consider. Second is Mitnick show that the weakest link in the cyber security is not a system, it's a people and it still exists. Even today, the phishing and social engineering remain one of the most effective hacking techniques. And the exploit of early hackers forced the government and corporation to take the cyber security seriously and leading to the systems and laws rely on today. So, but the story doesn't stop here. In 1990s, we bought a new kind of threats. Worm and virus did not just a target of one system, but spread across the internet like a wildfire. And tomorrow, we will going to deep dive into the story of Code Red. Exactly. One of the first worm to exploit the internet on a massive scale. And how did it infect the hundreds of thousands of systems in hours? And what did it teach us? to the world become a danger of connected world. Stay tuned because the stakes are about to get higher and 
don't wait you know this is something is biggest thing i'm going to discuss tomorrow which is called as a code red and if you're new to the channel do subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos or podcasts on a similar channel thank you so much good day bye